And the topic that I want to cover is five essentials of a happy family. Five principles or five ways where we could find, inshallah, our families, how we interact with them to be a happy family. And I don't say it in a sense that these are advice for husband and wife, the spousal relationship. And I don't say that these are advice that are put together for uh, parents and children. And I don't repeat it for those people who are siblings from brother to brother or sister to brother. But rather for the essential of the family. Everybody would find themselves, either you're a husband and or you can be a son and or you could also be a father or a, a grandfather. So we have to look into our lives before we point fingers at other people, what they do and what they say. <coughs> Let's look at what we do and what we say. Let's look at what we do and what we say. And I want to give you a summary of the khutbah, khutbah before we even begin, inshallah. The five points that I want to share with you, and I have all the ayat and the hadith written, but first one, at home, when you're at home with your family, tell each other that you love each other. Tell each other that you love each other. Number two, if you have to criticize, do it lovingly. If you have to criticize, do it lovingly. Number three, never be angry with your partner or with your children at the same time. You can't have two angry people shouting at each other. Never both be angry at the same time. Number four, pray together at least once a day. Pray together at least once a day. Five, neglect the whole world rather than neglecting your family. Neglect the whole world because you're responsible. Before you worry about the world, you have to worry about yourself and your family. Save yourself and your family from hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outlines to us. Now I want to talk to you about what Allah Azza wa Jalla said about showing love to each other and giving that reflection of the heart. I met, I gave a, a talk at one of the marriages, and the ayah that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in your heart, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً where he mentions that, and you all hear this ayah being mentioned at, on weddings or walimas, and we all, mashallah, enjoy the walimas, right? But now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, and one of the, the families who were there, and we're talking about people who've been married for about 30 years. The lady came up to me later, because they were very close uh, relatives or friends of ours, and she said, you know, when you mentioned about this, mawadda wa rahma, how come within Eastern Muslim families, and I won't mention the nationality, how come that word is never shared with each other? It seems like they only put them in, in the movies, but we never get to hear them at home. And that those three words are, I love you. Right? That's what you find out on the street. But what you find on the street and what's being sold with those red balloons and chocolate is lust, not love. That's what they're selling. They're selling lust, not love. And they're confusing the two. Love is where it's found. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it in the Quran where it's found. It's found in the family. Because with love, there are conditions. We love Allah. And then to show our love, we obey Allah Azza wa Jalla. A person who does not, who has lust in their heart, they don't have any responsibility. So we have to ask ourselves, are we people who show that love and respect to each other? And before we go on to the you know, outsiders and neighbors, let's ask about us and, and our family. Where do we stand with that? وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He puts it in our heart. Mawadda, which is love and rahmah and compassion. So we have to look into it how much of it that we practice and how much of it that we because the Prophet ﷺ, he saw a companion who was sitting with him and he saw a man passing by and he says I love this man for the sake of Allah because he was a good Muslim 
And the Prophet he asked him, why don't you go and tell this man? Why don't you go and let him know? Why? Because this establishes a relationship. So here's a woman who's been married for perhaps 30 years, and she said, I don't remember hearing that from my husband in so many years. So we have to, because there is a great pressure from outside, whether it's the TV shows or internet or uh, any of that stuff that's happening out there, that's a pressure and the families are suffering. And we have to make sure that we don't let our families miss out on the opportunity. Oh, it seems like they're sending the teddy bears and chocolate and all these uh, cards and things like that. And our families, they're saying, well, Islam tells us that you go and sit in the message for 30 days and never show your face and disappear for six months and come back and don't care about the family. Umar radiallahu anh, he made an obligation that any soldier in his army would not spend more than four months with him on any of the expedition. He would send him back to the family. Why? Because if you go to one extreme, then you neglect your priority. And Islam is the way of balance to it, inshallah. So know that, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And when he mentions that, that he had put that in it, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا And when he mentions the second of the word, tranquility, that's where, meskan is a house where you find peace and tranquility. And we want to find that when we go to our place of a dwelling, that we find that sukun, that sakina, that it's there with us, inshallah.